How are you all? Lovely to see you all again today. We're going to be looking at a very tricky dinky song. We're going to be looking at the solo from Crossroads called Eugene's Trick Bear. We're not going to be learning the crane kick today, but I can show you uh, pretty much what Ralph Macchio is doing when he defeats Steve I in his uh, massive shred battle. Anyway, let's take a look. second fret of the third string and this is all just going to be legato we pick the first note and then we're just going to do the rest of the work with our fretting hand so I'm going to hammer from two to five and then pull off and then hammer from two to four and then pull off and we're just going to repeat that relatively fast and then when you get bored slow it down and make sure you end on the the pinky note there I'm going from two to five at the end so once you've added that added that sort of slow down stagger feel in, we just want to end on the pinky note. Okay, so that's the first chunk, and then we start working through the arpeggios. The first thing we're going to deal with is an A minor idea. I want to start with a hammer-on from 5 to 8 on the 6th string. I bring my pointer across, and then I want to play 7 of the 5th. And then what you can do is you can economy pick this if you want. And then I'm going to do a hammer-on from 7 to 10 on the 4th. Okay, and then I get to sort of a standard A minor formation for the 3 string arpeggio. I'm going to play ninth fret of the 3rd string, 10 of the 2nd, and then I'm going to play 8 of the 1st. So all together, at the end of that, I just work my way down um, a basic 5 string A minor arpeggio. Actually it's the 6th string because I end on the C at the top. So I want to do a pull off from 12 to 8 on the 1st, I play 10 of the 2nd string, 9 of the 3rd, and then I'm going to play 10 of the 4th and 12 of the 5th, nice familiar shape there, and then I want to hit 7 of the 5th, and then resolve that on 8 of the 6th string. So look at that whole arpeggio now. Hopefully that's all making sense. Then I work into sort of a dominant uh, E formation here. Let's slow that down. I want to start from a B note though, so I'm starting below the root note. I'm going to start from the 7th fret of the 6th string. Then I'm going to have a 5-7 on the 5th. And then I'm going to play 6 of the 4th. And then hammer up 4-7 on the 3rd. So look at that thus far. I play five of the second string, then four of the first, and then from there, I basically do exactly the same arpeggio backwards, but I'm just going to leave out that seventh fret of the sixth string. So I'm just going to reverse that. So it's going to go seven, four on the first, five of the second, seven, four on the third, all plus, by the way. Then I want to play six of the fourth, and I'm going to do a, a pull off from seven to five at the end of that. Okay, so let's try the whole thing from uh, the A minor now. You can pick the last note of that as well if you want, if you want to have a bit more of an emphasis there, or a pull off as well. I think 
either sound quite delicious. Okay, the next thing I'm going to deal with is an A sort of dominant arpeggio. I want to start from 5th fret of the 6th string. I'm going to hammer 4 to 7 on the 5th. And then I'm going to play 5 to 7 on the 4th. All hammers when we need to. Then from there I'm going to play 6 of the 3rd and 5 of the 2nd. Then I'm going to hammer to 8. So all together. That last note I'm hitting is a high A on the 5th fret of the 1st string. At the end of that, I'm just going to reverse that arpeggio backwards from that uh, high, e, high A there, and I'm going to end on the C sharp on the 4th fret of the 5th string. So I'm going to play the 1st string on 5, pull off 8 to 5 on the 2nd string, then play 6 of the 3rd, then 7 to 5 on the 4th, and then pluck 7 to 4 on the 5th. I like picking that one twice, it sounds quite delicious. Anyway, forwards and back on the A7. Okay, now to finish off, we're going to end on a D minor, but I'm going to start from an A note on this. So we're going to have sort of a lower, I guess, fifth inversion, if you want to think of it that way. Let's take that slowly. I want to start from five of the six, and then hammer five, eight on fifth string. I'm just going to take that up to the next octave. So I'm going to play seven of the fourth, and then hammer seven, ten on the third string. Now the next one. I'm jumping up the next octave again. I'm playing 10 of the second string, then 10 of the first, and then I'm going to pluck the 13 and then start working that arpeggio backwards. So I go. So once I've done the 10, 13, I'm going to pull off back to the 10, and then I'm going to jump to 10 of the second string. So I go. I want to take that idea down the octave. I'm going to go 10 to 7 on the third, and then roll to 7 of the fourth. At the end of that. I'm just going to end that by picking uh, 8 to 5 on the 5th string. Okay, hopefully that's all making sense. Let's take it from the start of a gentleman's pace from that hammer on there. Nice and slow A minor. E7. Thoughts and taps. second section. I want to start off with a B diminished arpeggio. I'm going to start with a hammer on from 7 to 10 on the 6th string. I'm going to jump to 8 to 11 on the 5th as a hammer on. And then I'm going to play 9 to 12 on the 4th. A bit, of a bit of a mute feel also makes this a little bit spookier. Okay, then from there I want to jump to 10 of the 3rd string just as a single note. And then I'll play 9 of the, of the 2nd string. After that, I want to play 12 and pull off, and then I just reverse down that arpeggio. But I want to resolve that to 10 of the 6th string and set it back to the root note on 7. Hopefully that's all making sense. And then I work through this uh, kind of tricky A minor arpeggio. We're just sort of skipping around. Um, basic notes of A minor, but the formation is a little bit strange. So I want to start from 5 of the 6th string, and then play 7 of the 5th, and I'm going to jump to the minor 3rd, which is going to be on 8 of the 6th string. Okay? After that I want to play 7 of the 4th to 7 of the 5th, and you'll notice that I'm crossing over a hand position there to just get more in position with that pointer finger. At the end of that, I want to play 10 to 7 on the 4th. And once again, that muted feel makes it a bit spookier. Adds the tension, if you will. And then I'm going to play 9 of the 3rd and jump to 10 of the 4th. Then 10 of the 2nd and 9 of the 3rd. So all together thus far of this arpeggio. Okay, at the end of that, I want to play 8 of the 1st string and jump to 10 of the 2nd. And 
then I'm gonna play 12 to 8 on the first string. So we go. After I've hit that 8, I hold that note and then I'm gonna slide it to 16. And then after that I just play an open A on the 6th string. So all together that arpeggio. Let's try the whole section, we'll do the B diminished into that A minor and then we'll do it again, even slower with some taps. One more time, some taps. Uh, section three, this is sort of the sexy Paganini bit, if you will. Uh, such eroticism existed back then. Anyway, I'm going to start by playing uh, 14th fret of the third string, and then I'm going to play 13 to 17 on the second. Okay, and at the end of that, I'll jump back to the 13th. So we're going to go. Okay, after that, I'm going to jump to uh, 16 of the third string with my ring finger. It is difficult to do a big position shift, so I would recommend. Try and keep your whole hand uh, in one spot for the majority of this riff. So the second group I was playing 16 with the ring. Then I'm going to play 15, 17, 15 on the second string. So we're going to go... Okay, then I'm going to play 13 of the second string. And after that, I'm just descending down a scale. So I was playing 13 of the second string. And then I wanted to play 17, 15, 13 on the first and second string. And then resolve that to 16 of the third before we start again. So this is what we should have thus far. And as you just saw then, I do exactly the same thing twice in a row. It does change up on the third group, so we'll sort of divide it into four mini chunks. Let's have a look at this group. So let's slow that down. I want to start from 14 of the third. You'll notice that I do have a flat finger, so I can jump to the 14 of the second string. So I'm going to play 14 of the third, 14 of the second, and then play 17 back to the 14 on the second. Okay, then I go. What I've got here is I'm playing 17, 15, 13 on the first and 17 of the second. At the end of that, I'm going to slide from 14 to 15 on the second string, and then I go down what to me feels quite dory in shape. I'm playing 19, 17, 15 on the first, and 18, 17, 15 on the second. So let's try the whole chunk again with that little slide in the middle. Okay, so that's the third group, and the fourth group's going to be back here. You notice I've got that cheeky little slide in there as well. So what I'm going to do here is go from 12 of the third string, very similar to what we just did with the flat. I'm going to play 12 of the third, and then 12, 15, 12 on the second. And what I want to do here is I'm going to play 13 to 12 on the first, and then 15, 12 on the second. Hopefully that's making sense. At the end of that, I'm going to slide over from 12 to 13. At the end of that, very similar, well, exactly the same descent that we had in the first two groups. So I'm just going to play 17, 15, 13 on the first and second string and resolve that to the third. Okay, so we've got all four chunks, keeping in mind that the first two are the same. Let's do it relatively slowly, and then again with some tabs. Almost half some tabs. Let's take it from the 4th section. I want to start from 15th fret of the 4th string. 
And then I'm going to play 17, sorry, 14, 17, back to 14 on the third. And then I go to this. What I'm doing here is I'm just working down a scale by playing 18, 17, 15 on the second, and then jumping to 17 of the third. And now the next bit's kind of dancing around a bit of a diminished arpeggio. I want to play 13 to 16 as a hammer roll on the third string, and then I want to jump to 13 of the first, and at the end of that I'll play 15 of the second, and then 17, 14 of the third. So all together. Let's try the whole section thus far. Okay, then we're working with this phrase. Alright, so I want to start off with a bit of a tritone thing. I'm playing 17 at the first and 16 at the second. And then I want to slide that middle finger over. So I'm going to play 17 at the first, 16 at the second, and then slide that to 17 at the second. And then I'm going to work through major and minor thirds and just work those back. So I'm going to play 16 at the first, 17 at the second. I drag that back a full time to 15. And then I'm going to play 14 of the first string, and then 15 of the second, and then drag that back to 14. So we've got. Okay, and then from there I go. So I'm playing 12 of the first, and then dragging from 14 to 12. Sorry. And then I'm going to play 10 of the first, and drag from 12 to 10 of the second. Okay, the next one. So I'm playing 9 of the 1st and dragging from 10 to 9 on the 2nd. Then I play 7 of the 1st and then from 9 to 7 on the 2nd. Th I want to now play 5 of the 1st and drag from uh, 7 to 5 on the 2nd. At the end of that I'm just going to play 4 of the 1st and then 5 of the 2nd. So there's no drag there. So we've got... Hopefully that's all making sense. Let's try from the start of the section relatively slowly, join it all together, and then we'll do it again even slower some tabs. One more time, some tabs. Okay, so let's have a look at the fifth section. This is that sort of arpeggio part that's played quite quickly, but it's all the same shape, so it's a relatively simple idea, just played fast. So I want to start off with a pull off from seven to four on the first string, then I play five to the second string, and then end on an open note on the first. It's a little bit strange, but it does sound cool fast, having that extra open note. So I'm starting on a down pick, pull off, another down pick, and then I'm ending on a back. I want to do that exact same arpeggio eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the end of that, I'm going to go for a cheeky ninth, but then we're going to work through this phrase. So what I'm doing there is the seven to four arpeggio again, jumping to five of the second, ending on the open note, obviously. Then I jump 14, to 11 is a pull up on the first, 12 of the second. Extra open note, and then I want to jump up now to 17 of the first string. I pull off to 14 and play 15 of the second. Check the open note, and then I want to end on uh, 12 to 9 of the first, then 10 of the second, and then the extra open note. So all together. And we want to do that idea uh, four times. So we had eight at the start and then that moving arpeggio sequence four times. Okay, the next bit's a little bit cray cray. We're gonna be working with sort of big octave jumps. So I'm gonna play 17, sorry, I'm wrong with that. That's 19 to 16 on the first, and then 17 to the second. Check the open note. And then down the octave was seven, four, five of the second in the open note. So we go. Then I bring that back a full time. So I'm going to play 17, 14, 15 of the string above. And now I'm going to play five to two on the first string, three of the second, and then open. 
So we're gonna go. I'm gonna do that like this twice. Okay, now I'm gonna jump up to 22 of the first string. I'm gonna do 22, 19, and then 10 of the second. Sorry, 22, 19, and then 20 of the second. Open note. What I'm doing here is 10 to seven, and then eight of the second string, and then the open. So we've got. And then the next part, I'm gonna play 20 to 17, and then 18 of the second string. And then I'm gonna play eight to five, and then six of the second string. So we're gonna do that idea twice. Hopefully that's making sense. So let's take it from the start. I want to do the first bit eight times, the moving arpeggio sequence four times, and then we had the octave jump twice, and then the other octave jump twice. So let's take it from the start. The first bit. Or eight of that, and then four of this. First octave jump. Second group. One more song, and tabs. Sixth section, I just wanted to do the diminished rung by itself and then we'll work into the last chunk after that. So I'm going to start off from 22 of the first string. I'm going to do a pull off from 22 to 19 and then play 21 of the second string and 22 of the third. Now this uh, can be played a number of different ways. I've seen people sort of work on a diagonal. Um, this is sort of more what Alexi Leho does in, uh, in Downfall. So this kind of makes more sense to me. I've seen people play it that kind of way as well. So the first four notes, I want to backtrack now to, uh, what have I got here? 19 of the first string, I'm going to play 19, 21 of the second, 22 of the third, and then pull off to 19. And that's going to be the first little group. We're going to kind of work through four shapes. Okay, so let's have a look at the second shape. I'm going to do a pull off from 22 to, sorry, from 21 to 18 on the second string, jump to 19 of the third, and then play 21 of the third, 21 of the fourth rather. Then I backtrack to the pointer finger, which was on 18 of the second string, then play 19 of the third, and a pull off from 21 to 18 on the fourth string. So we go all together. Okay, the next one I'm gonna go from uh, I'm going to do a small position shift and jump to 19 of the third string. I do a pull off from 19 to 16. And then I will play 18 of the fourth and 20 of the fifth. And I backtrack to the pointer and I'm going to play 16 of the third, 18 of the fourth, 20 of the fifth and pull that off to 17. Hopefully that's making sense. Let's try and do all three groups together from the start. And then the last group is going to be a very similar shape to that, just starting from uh, 18 of the 4th string. So I'm going to do a pull-off from uh, 18 to 15 on the 4th string, then I play 17 of the 5th, 19 of the 6th, then I backtrack down to the 4th string and play 15, 17, uh, 19 again, but I want to pull off from that 19 on 16 of the 1st, sorry, 16 of the 6th. That. I'm going to play the A note on 17, pull it all the way back as a slide, and then I'm just going to play an A5, which is a power chord here, two of the fourth, and open on the fifth. Okay, so let's try this whole diminished run at a gentle bit speed, and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. One 
we'll install some tabs. Okay, final section. So we've just come from that big A5 chord and we did the same thing from an E, but after that I go. So I'm just sort of doing a bit of a trim thing, but if you want to be really specific, I think a bar of sixteenths is fine. So there's four groups of four. And then after that I go into this thing, which is a lot of E's with some slides. So what I'm doing here is I'm sliding from seven to two roughly on the fifth string, just as long as we get that a bit of delay helps that sound sexy as well. So keep that in mind. So we're sliding from five to two on the fifth, and I play two of the fourth. And I play open on the first string, which is an E. Got a lot of E's here, and I slide into nine of the third, and then I'm going to play twelve of the first string. So this is what we should have from the start. After that, I'm going to play a quick open on the sixth string, and then I'm going to play twenty-four of the first string. If you don't have a twenty-four fret, you can sort of bend up from uh, the 22 if you're so inclined. Anyway, so this is what we should have from the start. Okay, now we've got this big delicious harmonic minor run. I'm mixing up uh, legato and shred to just sort of get different feels here. Uh, what sort of worked for me best was starting with hammer-ons and then uh, a bit of staccato. So let's work through this run slowly. I'm going to start off with a hammer-on going 5, 7, 8 on the 6th string. And then I'm going to pick 5, 7, 8 on the 5th. Now to keep the harmonic minor vibe happening, I'm going to play 6, 7, 9 on the 4th as a hammer and then slide over one more fret. So we're going to go 6, 7, 9 and then to 10. At the end of that, I'm going to play, uh, what have I got here? 7, 9, 10 on the 3rd I'm going to pluck those. So we're going to go hammer on, pick, 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 hammer on slide, pick, pick, pick. And then the rest of it I'm going to pick. So I'm going to play 9, 10, 12 on the second. And then I'm going to play 8, 10, 12, 13 on the first. I think it's best if you can to get four fingers. So we go 8, 10, 12, 13. And then the next bit, I use four fingers as well. So the next thing that I had was 16, 17, 19, 20 on the first. Let's have a look what we've got thus far in gentleman's pace. So the next bit after that goes, I'm going to play 20, uh, sorry, 22, and then 24, and then I'm going to bend 24 up a full tone. If you're running out of frets, you can pinch harmonic this. Um, now I've seen some people play it over here, um, but the intonation on my guitar isn't that friendly. I can get some pretty juicy squeals though on the second string though. So this tended to work better for me. Uh, if you want to change it, you can. So what I've got for those last two bends, um, was a full tone, yeah, full tone on both of those. I was playing 18 of the second and then 20 of the second, um, and obviously we want to pitch those up um, an octave with the harmonic. So you can either use the side of your thumb or you can give it the old pinch harmonic that way. I prefer to just sort of zack wild it. So let's have a look at that last little chunk. And I was going between 18 and 20. That's pretty much the whole section. So let's go from that chug on the E chord through all the octaves and then that big run, and then we'll try it again even slower with some tabs. Almost off some tabs. tutorial on Eugene's trick bag. Hope you guys have enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you all very soon. Take care.